Welcome back, and now it's our last daytime opportunity of the games to check in with Jimmy Roberts. Jimmy, what's up? Lamps, you know, ever since the first athletic endorsement contract was signed, we've probably been asking this about our high-profile and successful athletes. If they do well, shouldn't they also do good? Today, the story of one who has, and then some. The human body's strongest muscle is the heart, which likely explains how one former Olympian has been able to lift thousands. In sports, the best are selfish because they don't have any choice. Care too much about anything but being the best, and it's best to just get out of the way. Occasionally, though, something happens and everything changes. So it was for Johan Olaf Koss, who was a bigger deal when the Winter Games came to Lillehammer in 1994. In front of an adoring home crowd, he won three gold medals. But all the while, something was on his mind. Five months earlier, he visited Africa. He was haunted by the poverty and the desperation, but mostly by the children who had nothing but bad dreams and worse stories. The racket, racket king speed, the fly as pool. He gave, he gave the whole family, only one person live. The rebel came behind us, come to attack. Run away. No two more in the bush. No food, nothing. I, I am going to make it. I will. I will. I will make it. I will make it with concrete. One child told Kasi he was the most popular in his town because he had a long sleeve shirt, the only thing that was suitable to roll up and make into a soccer ball. That was the day for Koss. Everything changed, and he, in turn, set about trying to change everything. He created Right to Play, a group which brings sports to children in the world's most disadvantaged and dangerous places, and uses it to change their lives. Instead of becoming child soldiers or suicide bombers, they now believe that they can be teachers or lawyers or doctors or they can be coaches and they, they start believing in a good side of life. In its standardized red ball curriculum, Right to Play has reached more than three quarters of a million kids in 23 countries. Sports becomes more than just games. They become lessons about winning and losing, conflict resolution, even HIV and AIDS. To see that these kids understand when you have a red ball and it can signify your red blood cells or the red ball can signify a virus, and you can educate them on prevention. At a young age, it definitely has an impact. Here in Beijing, Johnson & Johnson has donated money to the organization for every athlete who medals and signs up to be a Right to Play ambassador. Koss has been able to recruit more than 400 Olympians from 50 countries. And so with a red ball and an army of children, Johan Olaf Koss has set out to change the world. Sports are often frivolous, athletes sometimes selfish, but not always. Wow. Uh, Jimmy, isn't there evidence that among all Olympic athletes within their group, this is the most respected person? You know, it's always struck me as odd that we think of uh, athletes as heroes. This is a real hero. You know, right to play went from nothing. I'm talking ground zero, zero dollars. They now have an annual budget of $30 million a year. And that comes from the United Nations, from the private sector, and from governments as well. What this guy has done has just been totally selfless. May that number continue to grow. Amen to that. This is for you, by the way. Oh, bye.